We're at the Sydney Maritime Museum and I'm really excited because we're about to tour HMS Onslow. So I served on all the Australian Navy Oberon class submarines, but I spent most time on HMAS Onslow. And I also spent a, a week or two weeks on HMAS Vampire doing a training cruise back in the early 80s. So this is like a step back in time for me. I really enjoyed being in the Navy and uh, PJ hasn't been on an Oberon class submarine before, but she's heard some of the stories. <laughs> so she's looking forward to it as well. So the Kraken, you know, is used to pulling these down into the depths, but now she's going to tour one, see the terrible work that she does. There's also a lot of other ships here you can look around, you know, tall ships, uh, World War II ships and other ones, but these are the two I'm excited about. I've never been on board, but I have heard some very entertaining stories from the fat man, so I'm looking forward to this. Your feet, what's that? That's a sonar array there. A so sonar array? And these are the covers that go on. We used to put them on there to take them off before we die. And then the sonar dome up the front between the two forward plates. Yeah. And there's the fin behind us. This is our emergency buoy down here. So if we were lost and we we're on the bottom of the bottom of the ocean. We'd unscrew this and the big boy would go up with a radar, a radar antenna on top of it saying where we are. Save and it'd be attached me. by a wire. So what is that? They're just here? They're just here. This would open up and the big boy would come up and uh, it would tell you that we're lost and come down and get us. Yeah. Well, very topical at the moment. What happened? Uh, what's the timing in terms of the Titanic? Yeah, sub? well, the Titanic sub is totally different than this, but you know. I can't believe that they went down with one form of communication. Yeah, you know, on this submarine there's at least five or six forms of communication. So if any one goes, there's lots and lots of redundancy to talk to the above. Everything from, you know, uh, underwater telephone to uh, UHF to uh, ultra long, long frequency to grenades to message uh, torpedoes. So there's like lots of people going this way. Okay, the forward torpedo loading hatch, Charlie's trying to fit. <laughs> this is not the front door. But I did sleep down here for quite a long time. The escape hatch here. So if you were, if you'd gone to the four ends and the hatch was closed, you would, you could get into your escape suit and then even if the, it was flooded, so you could do two types of escapes, you could cycle through this one at a time or you could flood the compartment, be on a little air hose here and then just move around and then just there had some escape trunking that would come down here and you just nip under the escape trunk and go straight to the top of the surface, just swim to, to the top. There's the, um, there's the escape suit that you'd be wearing and you'd blow it up with this just before you left so you would just duck underneath and then it would just expand and you'd breathe normally all the way to the top try not to die no you would not die and then obviously there are the torpedo tubes yeah yeah you know, i used to have to go up there and like we used to store stuff in there when we were coming back from holidays and things like that like the beer and the wall, everything <laughs> And you know, I used to sometimes do the new inserts, so put the new stuff inside, so you'd have to crawl up inside and put the nylon back on and everything like that. Oh, yeah. It was uh, interesting. But there's interlocks, so you can't have the, the back open and the front open, so mechanical interlocks. So when you're at sea, all the trainees would sleep in here. So these were considered the best bunks in the whole um, submarine, actually, except for maybe the back six. The back six was where there used to be torpedo tubes in the back of the boat, but they took them out and they're very good bunk spaces but these were also bunks but only for the trainees really it doesn't look like a bunk let's have a look at it that's weird yeah well they put a, a canvas what? thing you lie that way yeah there'd be a canvas bunk there and you'd sleep there with your sleeping bag oh my goodness we made a hammock and put a hammock up underneath this first row of decking and then i slept underneath there for quite a long time except one night people were walking on the decking and it cut through the cut through the rope and I fell down at night time. So this is uh, the forward um, compartment. It's like a little torpedo tube and you can send messages up and grenades up, uh, like smoke grenades. And you can also put messages in there and things like that. And you can also put in like decoys and shoot decoys off through there as well. And uh, from the rear one, we used to send um, bathy, 
things to track the, the different thermoclines in the ocean. And here is an oxygen generator. So you put an iron pipe powder candle in there and then you push this up here you got a shotgun shell and it ignites the candle and makes pure oxygen so it burns iron powder makes pure oxygen a shotgun shell that's a really yeah. simple solution and uh, anyway so there's lots of stuff here underneath here's a, a mechanism to scrub out co2 out of the air Where? and down here and you can't oh, see it can't see. there's a seat there but everything in here has got a purpose you know like there's lots of stuff here everything has a and purpose I used to know, except the cracking. i used to know every single one of these valves and i could do it in the dark without any um now this is the cross tree so there's a whole lot of cross trees across here so anyway this is the forward mess so all the um the semen ratings would be up here you know uh like uh, electrical underwater war warfare and the ro's and everything like that who'd also worked the rope. So there was no traditional seamen branches that were here, but, you know, more technical ratings, but all the stokers, the um, elect electrical guys were down the aft mess, except for behind here is the senior sailors mess. So I, I spent a little bit of time living in the senior sailors mess towards the end. Well, I need to... Go down into the battery compartment and those batteries are six foot tall. Six foot tall. And there are like two volts each battery, but you know, we'd run them in series and parallel. And there's two battery compartments. This is one of the two battery compartments. So this is the forward hatch there. Mm -hmm. And this was my, when I went to the, the senior sailor's mess, I was still a leading seaman sort of thing, but acting petty officer. And so I got this bunk here, which I hated. It was the worst bunk that I ever had because it's right in the passageway and people move back and forth past you every day so you know like the junior of the senior sailors were out here and then there's more bunks inside the senior sailors mess which is in here so um yeah. and we'll go to the chief's mess soon which is the they don't bed. have an uckers board well I don't, I don't know why they don't have an uckers board out breathing air reserve air and all that you know breathing air very important so this is the galley Look at all the valves. So there used to be 69 Gages. people on this boat. How many? 69 is the minimum crew. And this is the galley for 69 people. A lot of friends to and travel with. And this is with. another little torpedo tube where you'd shoot the garbage out. So it would come in a bag and we'd stack all the bags here. You get very stinky and then you put the bags in there and shoot them down so you could get like six bags in at a time. So this is stinky and then there's your bunk. That would yeah. be very stinky as a bunk. Yeah. Oh look, that's a kitchen. That's the galley, yeah, the kitchen. That's the galley. Chiefs there. Three chiefs. Yeah, chief electrical, chief uh, engineering, and also there'd be a bosun as well. And this is the wardroom galley. This is so much like it's airplane. It's safe with their all around. This is like... These are all officers of bunks, except for one steward. There'd be a steward here as well. Bang! Jump! Throw it! Frank it! And this is the wardroom. Uncomfortable. Okay. Yeah, all the officers sleep here. This is crazy. Yeah, these are blackout curtains, so they put these across. So yeah. when we're at night time, inside there would all be black, but the rest of the summer could be white. Okay, what do you call this it? This is the control room. Control room. This is what's down here. No, this is where the sonar shack is. Over there. And then there's a station here. So something I'm getting a feel for, because there's a lot of people here exploring this submarine as a museum exhibition, is that it's really tight. Like, as people move back and forth through this vessel, it would have been very, very tight. Lots of people um, coming back and forwards or before and after, whatever. Uh, getting their meals and things like that. Charlie was saying like you had to walk back and forth and there's things like blackout curtain areas where people had to adjust their eyes and then they'd lean on you while you're trying to sleep apparently. All those sorts of things. So it's very, very tight. So one of the jobs I had was first panel. So I used to sit here and listen to everything and I'd blow the submarine to the surface and dive the submarine from here. And um, 
you know, I just sit here and listen to the officers and make sure that they were doing things that were mechanically okay to do. <laughs> and uh, they used to do six hours here at a time and I wouldn't let to leave the control room. And there'd be a second panel, which I did also for a long time, but he doesn't have a seat. He just stands there for six hours. But he can leave the control room. Standing for six hours. Yeah, so, but he can go and back and forth and he can get cups of tea and coffee. But first panel just stays here and can only leave if he goes to the toilet. And the toilet's right there, so... He has to stay in earshot, and the captain's cabin is there, so you can't make too much noise. Yeah. And what's behind me? I can't pan around because there's too many people. That's where you'd uh, sort of drive the submarine, so the, uh, the seamen did that, I never did that. And there's the conning tower hatch, which is also behind us as well. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we ditch gash out of there, you know, so we go up to the surface and be opened up for diving, but still cycle the, ha the gash through and just chuck it over the side. It was weighted down, it goes to the bottom. And, um, <laughs> You have the the attack and the search periscope in here, and they, you know, when they'd be there, this is motorised, so it would just go round and round, and there'd be an officer. Sometimes they'd fall asleep and fall off. Oh, I see. So it's this actually motorised. Yeah, this this goes around. We've never told that. There, there's if you go on the other side, yeah. if you push your foot down, this moves around and round, and you've got this thing here. You see this here? Does that move the seat, or does it move this? Yeah, yeah. yeah you, you. Oh my goodness. You turn this, you drop it in, and it drives this around because these are quite heavy when you're turning. Them. So you just sit in this chair, you that's a throttle. Yeah, yeah. And you just go round and round and round and all the time? When you're at surface, when you're snorting, yeah, they, they just go round and round all the time and they'd fall asleep. They'd fall asleep oh, and fall sure. off. I was just wondering if you get sick of it. I mean I never I I never did it very often. Your days but, um, yeah, they got sick of that. Officers got sick of it. That's absolutely amazing. Yeah, so... So is that what you call the search periscope or such? Yeah, this is the search periscope yeah. and that's yeah. the attack periscope. So yeah, this is a yeah. binocular and that's yes. monocular. Yes. Yeah. And that one, you know, just pops up, they quickly look around, yes. they drop it back down again. And you know, you, these are the periscopes over here. So you know, up periscope, down periscope, up periscope, down periscope and all that sort of stuff, just here. And uh, you know, you've got, you're pumping the internal ballast here as well. So you know, pumping trim back and forth. You know, and these are to blow up all the tanks. So you blow it up in a certain order so it come up normally. And you know, you blow They're beautiful gauges, aren't they? Yeah, but you see how it's all mechanical? Like, there's yeah. no electronic stuff. There's no flicking switches. Everything's... Like, when I, I'm not going to open it, but, like, you open this out to let the air go. Yeah. It's mechanical, you know. Oh, like, fantastic. You know, it's all... And like I said, back in the day, I knew every single valve and I could go to it in the dark. So, you know... I feel I've spent that much on it up you know that you control me Guilty self-affliction Prey on me when I'm lonely When I'm your willing victim My friends already told me But I don't wanna listen And that's um, HMS Platypus where we used to wow. leave from. We spent a lot of time over here on Number Four Boy, over here, which I don't think exists anymore. Yeah. Number Four Boy on Anchor. And yeah, we used to go out here. But that's neutral, so it's going to go nowhere. The pump will be running, but it'll go nowhere, and then you can put it through to the tank that you want. Yeah. Now that's how much I'm going to pump either way. Okay, and then so when I've got the trim pump running, and this is how I direct the trim pump. So at the moment I do neutral, but and I could do the C. trim is about like this, right? Yeah, so I could push water forward, or I could push water aft. You know, so all from one side to the other. What is this? This is the the starter for the trim pump. Yeah. So you push it in. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> and then you get, you turn it to get it to go. And that, that'd be... Uh, You're very yeah. squishy in there. You're so tall. Yeah. What's behind us? Sorry? That's the captain's cabin. Ooh. So he'd get woken up for just about everything. So any time we were opening a valve or anything like oh, that. Oh, captain. And he went through them like... And these are the hydraulic blocks down the bottom. Hydraulic blocks, these see through here? Yeah, and when we're snorting, you could see water coming down if it was coming through here, you know. <laughs> This one was always in for sloth peeing. mode. This one's always for peeing, so you just pee, this one will be always open. And these would be used as toilets. 
So P, so number what, number one, number, number two. And this is the officer's toilet here. Okay. With the shower. And so, you know, if you can sit inside, I don't know if I can still fit. <laughs> you fit. But most of the time you just leave the door open and talk to your mates while you... Oh, that's there. gross. But, you know, you just shut it up. <laughs> yeah, fit up. Feel better now? Relieved? Yeah. <laughs> WT shack. I don't know why you call it a shack. It's just considered luxury. Luxury. And then you have the basin here where they have to shave. They have to be clean shaven when we do. Oh, and it goes up. Where does it go up? To make space. <laughs> and there's no drain. You see how there's no drain? Yeah. So you can only have that much water. And then there's you a just... toilet. Did they have their own toilet, did they? They had their own toilet. Luxury. Yeah. Where's the shower head? Um, it was on a. It's over here, up here. <laughs> If you want to go in and have a look. All right, I'll have a look. Oh my goodness. This is the, the fridge is down there. The freezer and the oh, fridge. Oh yeah, look, there's a little. It's very civilized. I don't know if you can see this in the dark. But, <laughs> so here. I'm not going to take it down because it'll dump. Okay. The fridge is down here. Fridge? Yes, yeah, so I need the fridge and the freezer are down there. And this is the AMS, so I spent maybe a year working down there so the gyro shack's on this side the dry stores down there and down all the, there and all the auxiliary equipment is down there okay so you go down on the ladder and we had a flooding incident and that's the escape hatch for the ams where the guy's standing oh yeah and the only time i tried to use the escape hatch somebody was standing on top of it oh yeah oh you were trying to get out from underneath yeah well, that doesn't work well this is the this is the senior sailors bathroom Okay, seating your sailors. Yeah. And this is the um, the rest. So this is about 50 people's bathrooms. So you weren't allowed to shower. Only person who was really allowed to shower was the, the galley staff. So, you know, you do everything in these sinks. That's the senior sailors bathroom. What do you call it? A bird bath? Yeah, bird bath. You know. Wash yourself in the sink. Yeah, so there was a shower and the, and the galley person used to use the shower. And then inside things like this is your uh, okaba, so you know, sets. These are only good for five minutes, they're hoods, you put them over your head and then okay. you can use them, but there's longer ones in there. Okaba. So PJ's in the shower we weren't allowed to use. <laughs> I just hit my head. Yeah. So only then, the galley staff were really allowed to use the shower. And I'm like 5'2"? Yeah. And how tall are you Charles? 6'3". Six, 6'3". Three. Six, three. Mm. I mean I've shrunk a bit now, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, so just... Not allowed to shower, it's just here for decorative purposes. And this is a washing machine. So washing I don't know. Machine. You... Hang on, I'll turn it around. So you used to put all your clothes in the bag. I'll just get it out. <laughs> you, you get this and you put it in a bucket and you turn and, and it's then like you the have Amish your... style. And you weren't allowed to use water from the taps. So downstairs there's air conditioning um, units and the fridge unit we used to get the condensate from them and use the condensate to wash our clothes in ew yeah well it's just air. it's just water from there so it wasn't really bad washing yeah okay well this is actually quite high in this section and they used to use this one over here because all these got blackout curtains and everything as you can see yeah to do the developing so when you take photos out of the and I used to do that sometimes. I used to develop the photos just for fun or something. Cool. And each one of these bulkheads can be shut down. So here you've got your shut down to close everything off so you would isolate yourself from the next room. This is where you do all the pumping and flooding on the boat. Yeah. Oh, there's a little seat. And you sit here and this is the gauge how much you've let in. So if you're flooding in, you know, they would open a valve up for it and you'd flood it in so much. And then you'd shut it, but maybe you're pumping one of the um, the bilges, so you would just use this your ballast plant to pump it out. You know, so um, and these are two valves, so this would be your hull valve, and this is your backup valve here. So you got bilge pumps, and, and these are your flow meter here. Yeah, and there's your filter up there. So it's all good. And this is the actual pump itself, where you turn it on downstairs in the snake pit. The snake and this pit. is your air compressor. So, you got, oh, you got so why is it called a snake pit? Because it's full of like pipes <laughs> so, so these submarines you know they're not much different than world war ii submarines 
and everything's mechanical so you know you look at it all the valves and everything so when you start the engines you start them at the engine with compressed air and you'd hold the governor out mm -hmm. until it hooked itself in and then you would just drop it into the governor mm -hmm. but you know we did lots of things so if you look out there i had to change the heads on the on these So you got to walk down through here. How do you fit in there? Yeah. I don't know if it's too dark. Oh, I see the stairs down here. It's oh my tight. goodness, it's very tight. You have to take a lot your readings out of there, and you know you spend a lot of time writing the readings up. It will have to be very neat and tidy and readable because there's no electronics. So when you take the readings, you have to come over and take the reading off here. Write it on your little log sheet, your little log card, and then put it on the log book. Explosion. He was surprised to open it up and not find a log book. It's like, it's not working anymore, Charlie. <laughs> oh, no. Assuming the position of working, otherwise known as slacking off. And these are the exhaust valves. And you used to have these cotter pins, and you'd have to smack them out. See, they come down here. You'd usually run with one in and smack them out, and then when the engine's running, they're open, and a big piston valve, and if it's got stuck open, you get a hammer and smack it up until you get it there, and then you put the cotter pin in to hold it open. And what's this position called? Centers? Centers AB. AB. Okay. And um, why do these, so you said there's something about trains? Oh, these um, engines were also used in the Queensland train engine. So a lot of guys that worked here would go and work on the Queensland train engines afterwards. Same engine. And these are the superchargers here. So V16 supercharged engines. Supercharged. These are the generators, these are the coolers. Okay. This is the bear pit here. This is the bear pit. Okay, so we heard about the snake pit before. Oh, they nailed it down. But it used to go down there, it used to be part. That's where the um, main um, seawater used to come in. And every night we'd have to clean this deal level at midnight. Mm -hmm. And inside there, it's a plate deal Avril for the lube system. It'd be really filthy. You'd have to pull it apart. You'd put diesel here and then you'd wash it, each plate and then put them back in again and then start it back up again. Make the water seal. Yeah, so that would be um, the lower motor room. And you just nip down there to have a look. And they haven't bolted it. They didn't bolt this one. Oh, so let's close it now. So we take our shoes off when we come into the mess. Oh, okay, that's very civil. Yeah, so we would Why would you take your shoes off? Because you don't want it to be dirty. You have to scrub these floors every day. Oh, so God you knows your feet really coming from the engine room. And he's used to live back here. Okay. This, this machine here scrubs the CO2 out of the air. CO2 scrubber. Yeah, and this is the oxygen generator, so it burns uh, iron powdered candles. Uh, you know, and there's the escape hatch for here, so you oh, can escape, escape hatch, hatch up here. And um, when I first got here, you used to put the um, camera over there. You see that little hole that's in there? You'd put the camera up here and you put a screen here, and you could have movie nights here. <laughs> yeah, and. Uh, is this where you could project from the. Yeah, they project from that side to this side. Yeah. Okay, and all everybody would get like underneath under this seat, there'd be like a little locker, mm -hmm. and then everybody get one little locker each. This was my bunk for a while here. This one, and this is the steering gear here, and you got the aft bottle. You can steer the boat from back here as well. So, you know, what do you like about this space, Charlie? Well, when they got rid of the little torpedoes, they put these bunks in, and they're the best bunks in the whole boat because nobody walks past them, and also they're really quite large. Longer, yeah, this is called the back six. Yeah, yeah, so there's only three. No, there's three on this side as well. Oh, oh they've removed them. Yeah, and if you're in this, um, you'd get one little locker that people would sit on. I don't think they're still here, but they're little boxes about that big and that would be your everything you could take to see your wardrobe <laughs> and you'd have a little bag that hang off here you know oh god you had your pirate rig didn't you you didn't need uniforms no not really no and when we put the strong backs in above the after torpedo loading hatch we'd store our bags above that you know our running gear but they usually get all mold and mildewy yeah. when you're at sea and everything so we can just do this by okay. mechanical and you can just run everything here by hand but you have to use a hand pump 
and it takes forever. Um, that's also a hatch where we used to keep the beer. So that's the, <laughs> that's beer, the, the beer. beer tank, and we used to keep the beer in there mainly. Okay. So uh, we used to climb in, get the beer, bring it out, you know. So, yeah, it was all good. This and is I the after plane. What's this? Is the and what do you use this for? So you can see how big it is downstairs. There's some of the lockers downstairs. Yeah. And, um, you know, if you nip down there, you could see it. And that's where we used to sort out, you know, um, if we had personnel problems, we might be able to sort it out. <laughs> and there's a little lathe down there as well and a little tool bench as well. <laughs> and the lathe came in handy sometimes. Yeah. So it's about the width of this, but obviously the hole goes down and it's not very big downstairs. What's the purpose of it? Well, it would make it sound like the submarine's going another way and things like that. But also, if you were trapped on the bottom of the ocean, you could shoot up to say, this is where I am. Hello, oh, come and rescue me. Like, like a sort of rescue. Yeah, yeah. And you could put messages in them as well so they could find where you are. And, oh my God. Yeah. So, you know, it's all... And this a kettle. Is, yeah, this is the our rear station. Hardly ever use this base, and what we used to do is fill up a bucket and just wash our stuff on the ground in a bucket. Yeah. You could breathe out of that while you went to the escape trunking and went to the surface. The regulator. They brought yeah. that in after that. No, disaster. no, this was always here. This is escape. But in the engine room, you would have seen there was um, breathing gear like this in there as well. Ah. That's what they brought in. There he goes. There's my Charlie. Trying not to fall over the hatch. There's a machali! So like when we would dive, the, you turn these and they slot back inside the casing. So they just turn. And this is the, um, the escape boy here. So go up. Oh, so you had two? Yeah, one in front, one back. Because like, you know, if you lost the middle compartments, you know, and maybe you lost all everybody for it, and only the people at the back are still alive, you'd have to release it from here, you know, like... So that's it, he's standing part. on it. Standing on the escape hatch, Charlie. Yeah, and the exhausts are down here. See, there's the exhaust for the engines down there, so they'd be underwater usually. And those would not be on normally. When they're you up. had to clean the tanks, where would you go in? No, you see, the, they're, they're the vents, but those things there is the way you get into the hatches down there. But it's the fuel tanks, so these are all ballast tanks. Yeah. But some of these are fuel tanks as well. What about the really gross tanks you had to wash out? Oh, they're inside. They're pressurised. They're inside. And what were they? They're the forward slop, the, um, slop. The, the aft slop tank, which is not so bad, and the sewage tank. Yeah. Ew. Yeah, and underneath here is the fume bulkhead, which, you know, is forever replacing. And down here is your exhaust boxes there. Okay. You have the spray. And of course, they'd always rust out and everything. Look at the snort head. Yeah, it's in pieces. Seen better days. <laughs> yeah, the snort head is uh, definitely needs a bit of work. You can fix it, Charlie. Yeah, so there's a float in there that goes up and down. So when the the snort goes underwater, the float goes up and cuts off the air. And then downstairs, the engines are still running, so they suck all the air out of the submarine, or you know, they pull a vacuum. And then the wave goes past, and then it pulls back down again, oh. and it lets you get the air back into the boat. What breaks the pressure. But yeah, it's, it's good. Just quickly, what do you think about it? Do you like how they've presented it? What do you think? I think it's really good. It's unfortunate you can't go into all the little compartments, which obviously you couldn't, because I think people would freak out. And also, you know, it'd be hard to rescue them from the little compartments. But I'd love to go back down to the AMS and go along into the bear pit and the snake pit or go underneath the... And, you know, go back to the places we used to go and hide and sit and you know shoot the shit so anyway it was it's really good i'm really glad it does need some maintenance though like it definitely is needs some maintenance um but i suppose they do that periodically but the rust is, seems to be getting out of control i've really enjoyed this little tour of a submarine thanks to my lovely submariner charlie and we hope that you've enjoyed this too and it's been educational or entertaining consider yourselves now Honorary team members, you've had a tour of the sub 
and hopefully you've got a bit of a feel for what it's like living and working on one of these beasts. So thank you very much. See you next time. Maria, I wanna make everything okay. Don't trust me, forgive me, you have to find a way.